Um, I absolutely fell in love with Babylon 5 and we've had Claudia down here a couple of times which has been amazing and to have um, such strong women characters that Joe writes is really really gratifying for a woman watching because that's the only kind of genre sci-fi seems to be the only genre um, that was at that time bringing out really strong female characters. Right. How did you find um, going into the transition of um, coming in as Captain Lockley after the whole, we still don't know the whole fiasco with right. Claudia, but, but how did you deal with that? Because I know there was a lot of backlash from the fans, but I think you came into your own in about the third episode that you had, you just looked like you fitted. That's a very good cast. question, and I have several answers to it. Um, first of all, I was already a fan of the show, so I knew the show, I really wanted to be there, and the cast, the producers, the crew, everyone to a person went out of their way to make me feel welcome. And what I think Joe did, Straczynski, that was so remarkable is that he wrote art paralleling life, because the station didn't trust Lockley. And the fans didn't trust Lockley. So gradually, art and life sort of, sort of merged together. And I think, I, think, I think it worked that way. And I think where I really felt the appreciation and, and the acceptance of the fans was after Day of the Dead. Because my dad used to have a great saying. He was a Southern attorney and he said, Show people your strength and they'll take notice. Show them your weakness and they'll take heart. And I think that's what Day of the Dead and Neil Gaiman wrote it and I thank him for that because he, he allowed me to show the softer side of Lockley. And um, I think that made, it made a huge difference for me and it made a, a difference, I think, for the viewers. And, and I think it, for me it was also hard to find the proper command voice because there's a fine line between sounding like fire the weapons now and, and sounding like, you know, ah, the chickens are out. But um, that, that was one of the bigger challenges for me is to find that command voice and not sound like a witch with a bee. So, um, yeah, and I'd like to announce here, I did announce it on the morning show yesterday, but this is the first announcement that I'm making at a sci-fi convention that Claudia and I are about to do a film together. Yes, people don't realize it, but we're, we've been pals for years. And um, so the two of us are teaming up to make a sci-fi comedy, because we both enjoy comedy a lot. And um, look out. Uh, the, 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 the temporary title is called Defying Gravity. And uh, I think you're going to like it. Uh, let's see, any Lois and Clark? Yes. Do you really have a question this time? <laughs> <laughs> Doyle and I were, are, were really good friends. Um, I'm a night person. I could happily be a vampire and just dust off the dirt, you know, at sunset and go party. But um, Jerry Doyle is a morning person. And uh, he once had to get a spinal tap. And it was at 7 o'clock in the morning. Did I mention I don't do mornings unless money changes hands? But um, Jer his girlfriend couldn't take him to the doctor, so I volunteered to take him to the doctor. And, okay, I should preface this by saying Jerry is, in my opinion, OCD neat and tidy. He's just far too tidy. It just it, it gives me a tick. And I am... Oscar Madison. I'm just messy. It's not dirty. It's just, you know, it's just a trail of clothing and magazines and, and books and newspapers. Sudoku puzzles and crossword puzzles and, and chess puzzles. And, but anyway, I turned up at 7 a.m. to take him to the doctor. He lives 40 miles from me. He hobbles outside. He looks at my car and said, Oh, for Christ's sake, when's the last time we washed this fucking car? I can do it. So, Jerry, I'm going to pretend like you didn't say that so we can get you to the hospital. Um, oh, many, many, many instances with him. 
Uh, I actually, I, I, had, I wish that if the show had gone on longer, I would have liked to see a little, you know, get our little spark on maybe with Garibaldi. Anyone think that could have been fun? <laughs> Naughty, naughty. Um, I, I also called Jerry one night after the show was, was off the air, and I was watching the blooper reels for the whole five years. And I, and I said, aw, man, Doyle, I wish I could have been with you guys longer. I have such good memories of it, and it was so much fun for me. And I just watched the whole five-year blooper reel, and I expected him to say, yeah, Trace, we wish you'd been there longer. And he goes, get a life. <laughs> but he's my pal. Um, how many of you watched uh, saw me as a Cardassian on Deep Space Nine? Yeah, that was fun. That was 3 a.m. makeup calls. 3 a.m. makeup calls. Um, the other Cardassian science officers were very, very claustrophobic and uncomfortable in their makeup because, there's, as you know, it's a lot of prosthetic makeup. And so they would, from time to time, go swoon in their dressing rooms. During this time, I'd take advantage of wandering around the lot at Paramount and terrorizing the children on school bus tours. <laughs> <laughs> and going up to uh, executives that, because it's Halloween, they don't know who I am, and say, you're, this, you're the CEO of Paramount, I'd go, hey, dream bulge. <laughs> and uh, finally, security called uh, the stage there at Paramount and said, uh, you suppose you guys could keep your aliens contained over there? <laughs> so I, I like to have fun. I had fun on Lois and Clark Superman. Some of you may have heard the story of the water tower. No? Oh, it's legendary at Warner Brothers. I, I was I was on the no-fly list at Warner Brothers. <laughs> um, Dean Cade and I, and his stunt man, and my stunt woman, girl, whatever, um, Okay, I'll first preface this by saying there were adult beverages involved. Um, we decided that it would be really, really, really fun to steal bicycles from security, ride them to the water tower, and climb the water tower, just knee walking drunk. So we do that, and everything would have been fine. We wouldn't have been caught, except I scream, Ah! There's bats up here! And so security is alerted. There, there's only one way down from a water tower, let me tell you, and it's that little steep ladder. And so security was like arms akimbo at the bottom of the water tower, and I got the giggles so bad I couldn't run. Dean got away, all the stunt people got away. The security had me by both arms and were about to put me down on the ground, and they said, what the hell's going on here? Who are you? What the hell were you doing up here? What's your name, young lady? And I went, I'm so sorry, my name's... <laughs> Jerry Hatcher. <laughs> they uh, they wrote up a police report. I, I ran. I finally got through giggling and ran. And they wrote up a police report and gave it to our producer. And she knew me. I mean, she she knew it wasn't Terry. She she looks at the paper and looks at the officer and says, um, "I'll have a word with Miss Hatcher about this." But. Um, Terry never forgave me for that. I couldn't understand it. 